So at this point, you're probably wondering how the hell this works. So let's take a look. There are a few layers of software running on this and some hardware. And the way that this works, um, you did hear it dial out and there is a modem and it did in fact dial out. Uh, but that modem is not connected to my home phone line or dialing outside of the house. It's actually dialing into the house. And the way that it's doing that is it's dialing into another modem that is right here. And that modem is tied together with the other modem via this Sunrocket ATA, one of the VoIP adapter. This Sunrocket ATA is unlocked and I have configured it to point to a PBX server that I set up in my house. And I configured a pair of extensions, one for each port on the ATA gateway and connected the modems to them. I also had to do some protocol tweaking and the like, I'll show you that in a minute. At the other end of this modem, however, once modem A dials through the ATA in my SIP server over on a virtual machine in my rack over to modem B, modem B is connected via the serial cable over to this Raspberry Pi, which you have seen in such videos as model 16 connects to HDFS and SSH into Xenix. So this is now running a point-to-point -point daemon and listens on a Getty instance to provide dial-up networking and login. Once the user authenticates, it dumps them off to a PPP daemon, and in, they're in like Flynn. So let's take a look at how this works a little more closely, um, but this is the hardware aspect of it. This modem is here is configured for auto answer, so as soon as it gets a ring, it answers, which is why I picked up on the first ring. So let's take a look at how this works. Now, in addition to the hardware layers, there's a software layer. Um, in terms of web browsing that I'll show you as well. So this is the user interface for the SunRocket ATA, and as you can see, it is registered both lines. And what I've done here in the configuration for this unit is I have configured my SIP server and these two codecs, G711 codecs, this calls them PCMA and PCMU, or G711A and G711U. Those are high quality codecs that are capable of dealing with um, low bandwidth modem signals. So usually at the mid 20,000s in the bits per second rate, you know, 19.2, 21.2, 21.6, what have you. Um, the modem didn't negotiate it at 31.2. Sometimes that gets a little problematic because it has to renegotiate, but turning down the speed usually increases the connection quality. And then I configure each additional line as follows. So we can see here I have line one with an extension of 5309. It's got a password that's not shown and an authentication ID. And then line two, of course, is also configured now. Of course, configuring it in the ATA doesn't actually provide phone service to anything. You need a server to handle that. You need a PBX. So what I've set up here is 3CX, which I am currently using. And I have if I have set up here the, the gateway, the ATA, you can see, is set up here for both users. So I have extension 5309 and 5310 configured. Um, I had to configure them here first, and then basically when I configured each of the extensions, which I'll show you now, um, I had to set up the extension, a username and password, all sorts of great stuff. There's that authentication ID you saw from before. Um, you know, disabled the web client, because obviously I don't want other people coming in, and then provisioned it such that the protocols in question would be the protocols I wanted. Both extensions are configured this way, so G711A, and then G711U. I found A, I had a little bit of luck with A, maybe it was just luck of the draw, who knows. Um, SIP and VoIP are not my uh, fortes, so to speak, so everything I set up here is just code of what I learned. Now you might have noticed when I dialed it out, it was a four digit dial. Uh, that is because I have four digit extensions here. I had thought I was gonna try and get around that by using uh, substitutions in the dial plan. So um, some devices like Cisco devices will let me say, you know, if I dial, start dialing 867 and then the rest of the extension, I can substitute it with something else like 789 or in this case, nothing. To the right of the colon is nothing. So I was gonna dial 8675309 and have it just dial, or just have it send 5309 to the PBX. That did not work. Um, so I never took it out of the dial plan. Um, the other thing I configured on the SIP here is I changed the NTP servers over to Google. So, and you can see my codecs here and that's it. So that's really the SunRocket side and that's the uh, 3CX side to basically get a PBX set up so that the SunRocket modem could log into it, register the extensions, and the modems could dial each other and use a protocol that wasn't going to completely suck. As to the 
connection pieces after the modem is connected? Well, there's a couple of pieces. So oops. Um, here I have oops, D, a script that I run at startup, and this I just manually run, that sets up NAT and IP masquerade via IP tables, enables IP forwarding, starts up a mini HTTPD instance, which is actually what threw the um, MSNBC uh, 404. I'm not sure why that fell out of the proxy rule, but it did. Whatever. Um, and then it starts uh, a Getty and init's the modem, sets the speed, um, and then, and then of course the port TTY USB 0, it's connected by a USB to serial adapter, um, and then waits for a connection to come in. Once the connection comes in, I'll show you there, next there's a dial in script that feeds the username and password that I fed dial up networking in Windows 95. And once that's in, it's it. I also have a pure FTPD server on here I can run if I want to. And then the last piece, the uh, Internet Explorer bits, and this is where it gets a little fun, is I did not write this next piece. I just kind of found it on GitHub. It's kind of a neat project. A nice, uh, quick and dirty project that uses JavaScript to redirect connections back to the Wayback Machine. So what I have here on my Pi on port 8080 is my proxy. And I tell it not to uh, redirect local things. And then over here, um, I have obviously uh, this little server JS bit running uh, as a non-root user, of course, because that would be a bad idea. And here you can see I set the virtual date to 1997. And this goes out, looks up a uh, date for the page I type, goes out, gets it, and serves it, proxies it back. I didn't write this, um, I just found it on GitHub. It's a very cool little piece of software to allow me to play a dial-up internet simulator. So that's the short of it. Um, that's really how this works. Um, just for the sake of doing this from the other side, I will disconnect this and I will let it log back on and you can watch the modem answer it on the receiving side. So let's close this. And once this starts to dial out, we'll move over. Here we go. Type in my password. And you'll see the dial-up script pop up at some point. Watch this will light up. Here we go. Okay, we have carrier. And we have data transmission. Very good. And up here, my login script is running. Of course, sometimes a character gets dropped and it stalls, and that may be what happened just now. Uh, of course it did. Fortunately, I can just let it go. And now you can see there's, it logged me in, and now we're in. So usually it just goes, but if it drops a character, I find that the USB to serial adapter drops characters even if I don't have the modems connected, so I don't know what it is about that, but whatever it is. So that's the short of it. That is my 1990s dial-up internet simulator with the Tandy 4825SX, a Raspberry Pi, a Sunrocket ATA, a pair of modems, and 3CX um, PBX software. So thank you for watching. Until next time, stay classy.